Well, I first met Dan in 1971, my first year as a writer on um, the electric company. Um, I don't know if I'd met you in the Bible building. I, I was there, but we may not have been in production. When Sesame Street wasn't actively shooting, there was nothing for the writers to do, and we didn't come in. The offices for um, the show that I worked on was called The Reading Show, um, their second venture uh, into TV after Sesame Street. We had offices um, in this commercial building, and we had no offices. There were just desks, metal desks cl in a cluster. Um, but we moved to well, then was the Ascad building. I guess that's still, it's still the there. Ascad building. Um, a nice skyscraper, and so we all got our own offices. No windows, of course, but offices. But the writers for Sesame Street and the electric company were in like a same little little common area. And Dan's office was across the hall from uh, another writer from our show, and so there was just. But, but you were next door to him. It's, I mean, I, I tell people we were across the hall from each other. We were. I thought it was me, Dunn's man, and Jeremy. Possibly. Anyway, but we were all in the same general area. And so, um, I, I think I said before, um, I got to know Dan's uh, ex-girlfriend, Sharon Letter. Uh, she was in research, was it? Or, yeah, yeah, she was. A researcher. And she was the hot chick in the workshop. <laughs> I mean, everybody. You know, I mean, not only Randy, but, but she, but she was also very generous and supportive. And it was a different time. I mean, people, um, you know, I mean, I had we had yet to achieve what our goals were. We were. You know, we had jobs. We had nice jobs. We could earn enough money. I mean, this was 1971. Uh, you can make four hundred dollars a week, uh, a week, and have credit cards at Bloomingdale's. I mean, it's, it's it sounds antiquated, but it's true. Um, and I'm not sure who, how, who approached who about whatever mail or something, but uh, someone did, and we went, and the rest is history, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, well, no, 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 I think they actually... But, it, but, it, but really, it took a purchase uh, when I came out here the first time. You were already here, mm -hmm. and I collected before I left a few phone numbers of people who were in town. Right. And you were the first one I called. Mm -hmm. I was staying with my sister and brother-in-law. My brother-in-law was a producer and had a, a sitcom that he had created with Alan Alda called We'll Get By. He was producing that summer. Mark Mercer. So, yeah, Mark Mercer was my brother-in-law's name. Uh, so I had a place to stay. They had rented a house in, in Bel Air for the summer, and I could stay with them. So with their phone, I called Thad to say, I'm in town, want to get together. And he said, not only said yes, but with almost no waiting said, I'm supposed to pitch a show called uh, That's My Mama next week. Do you want to do it with me? Because I could not imagine doing it by myself. I mean, I just, you know, I mean, as much as I ended up, you know, running alone uh, and enjoying the process, I was terrified because I was really just learning. You know, I mean, I, I, I was, I, I was really a, a little lamb. Uh, I could write jokes, but um, even back then, I mean, you know, talking about shows, the difference between shows today and shows back then, even on a show that didn't have the mandate of greatness. Um, I didn't have the great comic cast. And that's why my mama didn't have anything great about it at all. But it still had a structure. It still had a, st a structure that, you know, where you could build them comic moments. Um, you know, it just, so you can actually learn. And the people who were, they had a writer on that show, his name was Larry Siegel. Uh, yeah. he, I mean, he was the later of the variety shows. He'd done Carol Burnett. He had a part named Stan Hart. Uh, so he was kind of, Nervous himself. He also regularly wrote for Mad Magazine. Yes, he did. Yes, yes he did. Um, what was interesting about, one of the interesting things about that, we, you and I both had a similar reaction when asked, we were asked about what the Emmy meant to us. Right. That it's kind of a validation. And I was thinking, I'd, I'd always worked in children's TV, and suddenly there was at least something saying, well, you did a damn good job. Yeah. That was nice and refreshing. But you have to prove yourself. I came out here very uncertain because I hadn't done adult television. And in our first meeting at That's My Mama when we were pitching, they brought in the writers, including two guys who had written for Jack Benny. Jack Benny, right. Uh, Al and Al. <laughs> Goldman, Goldman and Gordon. And I don't know which one is Al, Al and which Goldman one is Al. Al Goldman and Al okay. Gordon. Uh, for 39 years. So, so them and Larry Siegel, and I think there was one other. And we'd, every idea we would present, they would all discuss. and we'd, And... It took me about 20 minutes to realize Thad and I were the two best writers in the room. <laughs> and it, it was wonderful for me because they didn't know it yet. 
<laughs> but one day they would, and in the meantime, I didn't have to be scared. I was going to make it in this industry. God, I, I still was 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 nervous, and I was I, I was intimidated by the age, the experience. Um, I thought you were going to tell a story about how we pitched a joke, and <laughs> and one of these two guys, you know, Jack, Gordon Goldman, written radio, Jack Benny, TV. I mean, you know, that's what they've done. But that's not, and they're all writing a black sitcom. Go figure. But that's that's what they did back then. And we pitched a joke, and one of the two guys, you know, sits back and he says very, very coldly, "That's funny." <laughs> it's, it's very funny. <laughs> it's, yes. But you know, it's like you know, we're not going to give you, we're not going to give you, you know, the, the right to laugh at your stuff. Well, to tell the story inside out and backwards, we were taking turns pitching, right. and I got the one that had that joke in it, and I thought, oh God. Don't, just don't blow it. Just say it. Don't, don't try to sell it. Just say it so they can hear it. And I said it, and there was silence. And I went, oh, silence. oh, all right. I thought it was funny. Mm. And, and then we got this reaction where we had impressed them. <laughs> the queen says there's a crumb <laughs> of approval. The queen says take this, well, It's like those old jokes of number 47, ha, ha, ha. Right. <laughs> number 32, nobody laughs. So right. you, you told it wrong. <laughs>